Yesterday I had a chance to talk to you about Hope Big. Today I get a chance to talk to you about Relay Big. Tell some stories from around the country, some of those stories of pride and commitment and dedication and passion that you all bring to the table in your communities every year. Um, this year there were 5,200 relays across the country. Never been 5,200. That's a record number of communities who got involved in relay. There were two new communities in Pierce County. Pierce County is where Tacoma, Washington is. So we still are adding communities in our, in our home state and uh, the pioneer relay community in town. We had the opportunity also of engaging a record number of teams. There'll be nearly 200,000 teams involved this year. We will have three and a half million relayers, three and a half million of you involved around the country. That's actually going to be a little less than it was last year. Let's look at some statistics that might be of interest. In each of the last seven years, starting in 2006, relayers across the U.S. have generated more than $400 million every year, every one of those seven years. Yeah, that deserves an applause. And this year we passed in net income a mark of $4.5 billion. And next year when Dr. Seffrin and all of us will be celebrating 100 years of history of the American Cancer Society, we'll get to add a little footnote because Relay will pass the $5 billion mark next year. Yeah. It's all good news. A little bit of not so good news. This year we're going to have about a 2% decrease in relay income. That's about $7 million. We're actually about $30 million lower and less than our peak of 2008, which really emphasizes why we are all here in this room this weekend, the last couple of days, and what we do going forward. Our challenge is there, but we're going to be prepared to, to go out and to kind of see if we can turn that around. So there's lots of other good news to share. And I'm going to start in the Relay Big Tour in Johnson County, Tennessee, where, hey, they said it's 2012. Why not have 2012 Luminaria this year? And they did. Um, and of course, any story of 2012 has to include our founder. You heard him yesterday. Um, the tributes to Gordy across the country, across the globe, have been a part of almost every relay. And I got an email from him yesterday, and he gave me his new cell phone number and also said next Friday he's going to have his surgery. So take a special moment during next week or next Friday, and uh, let's say a little uh, prayer and good thoughts to Gordy as he goes through his uh, stomach cancer surgery. We also had the opportunity this year to have a revised and redesigned website. We had a relay ad campaign for the first time, nationwide ad campaign that generated <laughs> lots of new teams. And if we're going to talk about Relay Big, we probably need to follow this truck to Bakersfield, California. Let me just tell you a little story here. Um, how about some of these numbers? 448 teams, 7,600 participants, 1,750 survivors, 17,328 to be exact, Luminaria, $2.2 million in net income. All of those figures, an increase from the previous year. There's, there's a couple people from Bakersfield in the room. Stand up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If that's not Relay Big, I don't know what is. We also had some great success from some of our top teams. Now, this is the unofficial total. We don't know what the final totals are going to be, and there may be some other teams who will do equally as well. But this is from the new core steel team from Decatur, Alabama. Who knew? <laughs> who knew you could raise $52,000 raffling off two quilts? <laughs> but they did it this year, and they're going to raise about $275,000 this year. I had a chance to go to the Lord's Hospital team celebration. You can see in the background from Patuka, Kentucky, they raised $224,000. But I do know, because people have told me, that the Burrito Brigade from, from uh, Texas raised $222,000. The Advanced Industrial Services team from Bakersfield helped them. They raised $324,000. And the number one team this year, Rosebud Mining Company in a small town outside Pittsburgh, $436,000. So if there's anybody from, 
If you're here and you're a member of that team, please stand up. We want to give you a round of applause. If anybody in the room from those teams, please stand up. Thank you. You know, sometimes we overlook the U.S. territories who are part of the relay world as well. Now, of course, they can't vote in U.S. presidential elections. That may be a blessing this year, who knows, but they can relay. In Guam, they added a relay recess and a bark, and they did $465,000 on Guam. I had a chance to go to the San Juan Puerto Rico event. There are 35 relays in Puerto Rico and they raise over $3 million on all the relays in Puerto Rico. Also had a chance to visit the U.S. Virgin Islands, and this is uh, St. John this year, the smallest, the smallest of our U.S. Virgin Islands, only eight miles by three miles, only 4,300 people. They have kind of a laid-back attitude about fundraising, as you can see. You know how much those 4,300 people raised? $170,000, yeah. yeah, pretty remarkable. There was also a relay this year, a mini corporate relay at our BP uh, oil facility up on the North Slope, um, but there was also a lot of competition for some extreme relays. This is, uh, this is from our friends in Australia. This is uh, the wintering crew in Camp Casey in Antarctica. Um, now, you think, you talk about extreme relay. <laughs> this is the, uh, they're stuck there for six months. Nobody can come and go. So they're having some great relay fun. Uh, you got to love the spirit. You got to love the, uh, the, uh, the commitment. And who knew that you can do karaoke in 20 below degree weather? Now, you don't see a lot of people listening to this person, but <laughs> you can do karaoke in 20 below weather. Now, who knew that relayers are so coordinated that at the same weekend the Australians were doing this, our Canadian friends were having a relay in the Arctic. Yeah. The same weekend, the northernmost, the northernmost inhabited town in, in the Arctic, um, Alert, uh, had a relay. And fortunately, they also had the good sense of moving some of their ceremonies indoors. So. Now, this may look like an ordinary track, right? Sure does. Um, but this is not an ordinary relay. Not exactly. This is a survivor lap at the relay in Folsom Prison in California. Folsom State Prison. Prison relays, why not? You know, and um, those, uh, you don't see a lot of purple there. We understand purple's a gang color, so um, they kind of cut back the limited number of that. So. But everything else there, and those aren't gang names on the, on the uh, fence, those are the teams that have their name there. They had 47 teams, 440 participants, 26 survivors. They did the ceremonies, they did team photos. They even had a guy come up and want to make, uh, make a contribution uh, toward the end of the event. He handed them $20. That's his entire paycheck for the month for working in the laundry room. The event raised $7,000. Pretty cool, huh? Also, no pictures were allowed, but our friends in Puerto Rico also did a prison relay at the uh, Metropolitan Detention Center. This was their third year. They had 1,500 people participate, and you can see the check, $9,000 from the, uh, relay, the prison relay in Puerto Rico. And I just put this up there because I just miss seeing these guys in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and they're acting sad like uh, they, they really missed me. But, um, and I did miss a good photo op with them. I would, of course, stood next to the guy in purple. Um, Barrington, Illinois, last year, we, we celebrated their success. They went from 90,000 to almost 350,000. Great turnaround. So how did, they, uh, how did they fare this year? How did they keep that momentum going? Well, the, uh, the fashion design class at the high school helped out, made paper dresses, put them all around town as a way to promote the, uh, the relay, and they had another solid year. So not only had a great year last year, but they, they came back this year as well. So we're not sure who's going to be the comeback player of the year this year, but Tulsa, Oklahoma's in the running. Went from 120 to $180,000 in one year. Not bad. Um, we were impressed when we first saw this plane from Delta this year, but um, we had an opportunity to 
they had an opportunity to think big, relay big, and ask, well, why couldn't we do some relays in airports around the world? So they did. 50 airport relays on May 10th happened all over the country the, on the Delta Day of Hope. And, um, our friends in the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport, where they have Flat Gordy there, this is where it all started a few years ago. They had a great presence in Oklahoma City as well, and the volunteers and survivors in Memphis celebrated this. Those 50 airport relays generated more than $700,000 this year. Very cool. Now, you're going to hear more about this in, in, in more specifics, but if we're talking about Relay Big in 2012, it's important to uh, point out that we, we continue to see an expansion of our bark, like this first one in Valdez, Alaska, or back to the Pioneer, the very first re, uh, bark that was in Pottstown, PA. And you're going to hear more about Relay Recess, but I just have to mention that that's been a significant part of the growth this year as we've engaged young people. Yeah, and I just, uh, you, you love the thoughts that some of our young people can put on our luminaria bags and they're learning some, some great skills and introducing a whole, whole generation of young people like this California school did. Um, high school relays are a, a place that we're also seeing some tremendous growth and of course it's the only place where you're allowed officially to duct tape your principal to the wall <laughs> to raise money for your school as they did in Maryland. Um, and I do have to point out, and there may be a high school that did better than this, but we do have a first-time high school relay in Huntington, New York, that raised $125,000 this year. So. I wonder what it feels like to be duct taped to a wall. I, I don't know. That's got to be weird. Um, we have several new corporate relays this year. Uh, this was a first-time corporate relay from our uh, new corporate team, national corporate team, partner uh, with McKesson. This is in the Galleria Mall in Scottsdale, Arizona. $40,000. And um, where would we be today in the relay movement without the involvement of the CAC and the colleges, uh, the students and colleges all across the country? Such, such an integral part, such an integral part of what we do. Uh, there's more than 500 campus events, almost an equal number of CAC chapters. This is MIT. They had a great year. They doubled their income this year. And we, of course, when you talk about campus events, you talk about Virginia Tech. And we, we sent a secret team there to figure out what is it? What is it that keeps Virginia Tech as the number one campus event? Well, we figured out their secret. There it is. Yeah, that's it. They've been hiding it all these years, but we know what it is now. Now, when we talk about fundraising and Relay Big, sometimes it's those personal stories. You all will generate more than $400 million this year in gross income for the seventh consecutive year. It's remarkable. Think about that again. But it all happens one person at a time. This is Bonnie Roach. She's a U.S. military retired. Her husband, Jim, she's a survivor from 2003. She has lots of friends and relatives who also have faced cancer in the journey. She's got a connection to a, a relay in Tennessee. We're in Tennessee. She joined one of their teams and um, participated in the uh, online fundraising challenge that they had earlier this year for a month. She won. She was the top fundraiser, raised close to $6,000 online and had continued to fundraise and raised about $10,000 herself. So she helped a team do well and she helped the community make its goal. Now the rest of the story is she did this while serving with a defense contractor in Bagram Air Force Base in Afghanistan. She raised $10,000 online from Afghanistan. We are very fortunate that we have potentially, and we have and potentially more, millions of people like Bonnie who are committed and dedicated and willing to go the extra mile and ask, well, sure, I can do that. Why not? I can raise money from here. I can find a way to do it. I can hope bigger. I can help find a world with, with uh, more birthdays. That's why we're all here. We are the leaders of the relay movement, both in this country and globally. If we want to turn around a slow year like this year, it all starts here. We can do this. The tools and resources that you've gotten this week are, are, are remarkable. Been doing relay summits since 1997. I don't think we've ever put as much solid stuff 
with the right people in the room than we've ever had before. So we're going to do this. We're going to make a difference. I'm Rule Johnson, and I'm part of the global relay movement.